Last week we talked about being irritable. Well, when we're irritable, it often leads to anger. In the NIV verse 5 of 1 Corinthians 13 says that love is not easily angered. Now I think the emotion of anger is, while well, the most confusing emotion that we have as human beings. The reason is, is that, well, the emotion of anger is good. It's a, it's a good emotion. Yet the scriptures caution us from letting our anger turn to sin. How do I know that anger is a good emotion? Well, Jesus got angry. Didn't he get angry when he uh, kicked the uh, money changers out of the temple? Yeah. Anger is not the opposite of love, apathy is. If we can learn to deal with our emotion of anger, keeping it from turning into sin, then we're going to be more loving people, Paul says. How do we do that? Well, number one, we have to resolve to manage our anger, and a big part of managing our anger is understanding it. Proverbs 29, 11. A fool gives full vent to their anger. Ah, but the wise keep themselves under control. When we get angry, what we really need to understand is, well, what's the source or the, the trigger of our anger? And there's four common channels or triggers of the emotion of anger. Number one is frustration. You know frustration, don't you? We're going to leave in ten minutes. Ten minutes. Oh, we're going to leave in five minutes. All right, we're going to leave in two minutes. Okay, it's time to go. Two minutes later, okay, it's time to go. Five minutes later, it's time to go. Ten minutes later, it's time to go! <laughs> you know frustration and how it creates anger, don't you? Another source or, or trigger of our, of our anger is hurt. Hurt in the moment, hurt from the past. When we're put down, when we're made fun of, when we're rejected, that often hurts. And oftentimes the way that we respond is with anger. Now, if you're a guy, you mask all of those emotions being devalued, overlooked. Those, those all come out as anger because men only get two emotions in life, right? Anger and ecstasy. That's all we have. We have, we have two boxes, two Two sources, that's it. You women, you understand all the nuances of emotion. We, we don't get that. And so when we're hurt, we often respond, because that's not an, uh, an ecstasy moment, we often respond in anger, because we're hurt. A third source is conditioned response. You often get that from your family of origin, how you were raised, right? And so if you were raised in an Italian or an Irish family, you know how to get really loud and wave your arms around, right? I was raised in a German family. We are like the Italians and the Irish because we can get really mad, but we don't move our arms. That's the difference. <laughs> Frustration, hurt, conditioned response. Then there's that anger that comes really instinctually. And it's a protective mode. We get angry when we're threatened or fearful about something. And then because of our basic flight or fight response, we fight, we're ready to overcome what comes at us. There are very few occasions of that, and let me help you. If your fight or flight response uh, kicks off at our age, run. 
That's my suggestion to you. Run. Those are the sources or the triggers of our anger, and they often channel or are expressed in two ways. Number one is, is that it's, it's expressed in a, in a way of, of repression or in a, in a hidden way, a passive or hidden way. You know what that is, that's stuffing it. There are two kinds of people in this world, stuffers and spewers. If you shake up a stuffer long enough, they'll finally spew. Um, They're a little bit like a Coke, you know, like a, a, a can of pop. You know, you shake them up and open it up and it goes everywhere. Or scapegoating or blaming, that's another kind of passive way that we deal with our anger. And then the, the opposite channel is, is that we give ventilation to it, we express it, and that's often in a, a direct attack on someone else. And if you think about it for a moment, a lot of our anger falls into one of those two categories, either kind of a passive or active or direct aggression towards someone. When we understand the, the triggers and we understand the results, now we're, we're resolving to manage our, our anger a little bit better. Another aspect of our understanding is the realization that there is a cost involved in getting angry. It's interesting the Bible mentions that. Proverbs 29, verses, verse 22 A hot temper gets one into all kinds of trouble. The New Living Translation says, A hot temper gets you a night on the couch. (laughs) You're laughing, so you've either sent them or gone yourself. Have we noticed that there's a cost in our anger? When we let our anger become destructive, it's a little bit like, you know, in love we're building a building. Uh, Let's say we're building that building out of bricks. And when we get angry, that's like bringing a wrecking ball to the building blocks of our relationship, the bricks of our relationship. And have you noticed we knock down more in one single movement than we could ever put up? It's not as though it's one for one. We put up bricks of love one at a time, but in anger we tear them down dozens at a time, don't we? There's a cost to our anger. And we need to understand that and take that into account. Proverbs eleven twenty nine: 29, the fool who provokes their family to anger and resentment will finally have nothing worthwhile left. Why is that? Because they will all be gone and they will have taken half of everything you own. (laughs) There aren't too many divorces that happen over love, but there's a lot of divorces that happen because of anger. We have to resolve to manage our anger and a big part of that is understanding. And as we understand our anger, we do need to count the cost. We also have to look at the best advice ever given when you're angry is Proverbs 29, 11. A stupid person, wait, let me say that again. A stupid person gives free reign to their anger, the wise waits and let it grow cool. Simply, what Solomon is saying is is that we have to learn how to count to ten. When we're angry, we need to count to ten. We need to take a moment and let our anger cool off. We have to call for a time out. You know, I'm, I'm too angry to talk about this right now. Let's talk about it later, and two or three weeks later, we... No, that's why the Bible says don't let the sun go down on your anger. It's okay to get a time out for a while, but not for a week or two. That really doesn't work very well. 
But if we feel the, the heat of the emotion coming, it might be good for us to say, you know, I'm, I'm not really ready to talk about that yet. Or give me a minute here. I'm feeling kind of mad, angry. We have to resolve to manage our anger and we have to learn how to release our anger in a healthy way. Ephesians 4, 26. If you become angry, don't let your anger lead you into sin. How do you, how do you know your anger is headed in a sinful direction if you do any one of these three things? Number one is if you suppress it. If you suppress it. If you try to bottle it up. And I can guarantee if you try to bottle up your anger, it never works. Because usually what happens is it either causes you to implode emotionally, it eats away at you. Or what we commonly do when we try to suppress uh, our, our emotions is they, they pop up someplace else. And that's true with suppression and rejection. The idea that, that we deny the fact that we're angry. You're mad. You're angry. Oh, no, I'm a Christian. I, I'm not allowed to be angry. Oh, no, I'm not angry. Oh, sure you are. You're angry. You're upset. You're mad. And it becomes destructive when we try to deny the fact that we're angry. Because we have that emotion, God has given it to us for a good reason. And there are right occasions and right responses, healthy responses to our anger. Don't suppress it, don't reject it, deny it. And third, don't express it. Why shouldn't you express your anger? A very simple thing. Psychologists call when you let yourself get really angry, ventilation. We ventilate our, our emotion. And it's interesting, studies show that the more you let yourself get angry, the more angry you will become. Because it's a conditioned response. And what we really need to do is we need to unlearn that conditioned response, not reinforce that conditioned response. So the more we get angry, the more we express it, the more we're going to express it. And I don't know if you've noticed this, but anger in your life has a tendency to snowball the more you express it. And that proves out the observation that ventilating your anger just encourages it in a destructive direction. What we need to do is we need to change our thinking so that we change the way that we communicate. Proverbs 15.1. A gentle answer quiets anger, but a harsh one just stirs it up. And we know that that's true. We know that when we respond in an angry way to somebody who's angry, it, things just get worse, they don't get better. The best thing is to learn how to respond in a wise, gentle manner. Now, I'm not saying you can't be firm and decisive in your response. I'm not talking about becoming a doormat every time you have a, an argument with your boss or a coworker or a kid or a spouse. What I'm talking about is resolving to express that in a healthy way. And that's in a wise way. That's in a gentle way. That's in a way that doesn't make things work, that makes things better. How do you do that if you make things worse when you get angry? Well, you have to change the way you think. You need to re-script your, your response to anger. Now, if you were raised in a home where mom or dad got angry, you learned a certain script on how you're supposed to act when you're hurt or you're mad or you're angry. And we play that script or that tape 
over and over again in the way that we act. And the more you act that way, the more you're going to act that way. And what we need to realize is that maybe the script that we penned when we were children isn't all that helpful to us now as adults. And oftentimes what we do is if we came from a model that was highly aggressive, we go to a model that's highly passive, thinking that's the better way to be. Where our parents yelled and screamed and threw things, now we stuff it or we blame someone else, which is just as unhealthy, just a little less destructive. What we need to do is learn how to express that emotion of anger in a gentle and wise way. And to do that, we have to do a little changing of our thinking, a rewriting of that script. How do we do that? The best way to do that is to rehearse how you want to respond when you feel anger. And part of that is realizing what your triggers are. Are you frustrated? Are you hurt? Is that just what you learned when you were a kid? Do I feel threatened, fear in some way? And when we can identify the trigger, now we're, now we're on our way to responding the right way. Instead of in, a, uh, in an unhealthy way, in, a, in a, what I would call a, a fit of anger. A fit of anger. So we have to rehearse that. Oh, okay, well, when I feel this way, this is what I'm going to say. This is how I'm going to respond. Because the way you've been responding usually is you've been lashing out. You've been lashing out in a destructive way. And you know the destructive ways we do that. Sometimes it's verbally. We verbally uh, punch holes in the other person or tear them down. Or maybe we literally do that. I had a man in my office and his right hand was in a cast and I knew what he did. But I gave him the benefit of the doubt and I said, hey, what's up with your hand? He says, oh, I got really mad the other day and I punched the wall. Now, when you punch the wall and you hit the drywall, that's kind of dramatic, isn't it? But when you punch it and you hit a stud... That breaks your hand, right? So we spent several sessions talking about anger in his home life and work life and personal life. What we need to do is we need to interrupt our physical response and anger, and I'll give you just a simple thing to do. When you feel yourself getting angry, have you noticed you like to be in an aggressive position, which is usually standing up? A simple way to interrupt your physical emotion of anger is to sit down. Okay. I'm really mad at you. No, what... Have you noticed it's really, you know, you just cross your legs, relax a little bit. Wow, that's a healthier instead of this. Right? So you rehearse the way you want to respond, and when you begin to get angry, you interrupt your physical response to anger by changing your body, your body position. And the easiest way to do that, I know, is to sit down. Is to sit down. Change your body position. That'll help re-script what's going on in your life. If you want to change your emotion of anger, the expression of your anger in a positive, healthy, loving direction, I guarantee you're going to have to rely on God. And God says, I'm here to help. David writes he's a little mad. He's been a little mad in the chapters before. 141.3. He says, Lord, help me control my tongue. Help me be careful about what I say. Now, you may need to cut this out and affix that to your mirror, or you may need to cut that out and affix that to the mirror of your spouse. 
How do we know we can win over our temper? Galatians 5.22, the fruit of the Spirit is a list. In that list is patience. If you're a person who's easily frustrated, you just need some more patience. I know I'm speaking to myself here. And two, if you're angry and that turns into sin or destruction, you need self-control. Because anger many times is an issue of self-control and or an issue of patience. And who wants to give you the fruit that you need? It's God. That's one of the privileges of being His children. Is that He desires to bless us with everything that we need. And if you're a person who gets red-faced angry, or you're a person who stuffs it all in and ducks and covers and pouts, you could use a little more of what God wants to give you. Every person in this room is dangerous under the right circumstances. There's all occasions in life where we get angry. Paul says that Love is not easily angered. So let's not get angry easily. And when we do get angry, let us pray that we can express our anger in a healthy, constructive way. Let us pray. Lord, you know to be those kind of people. People who get angry but don't sin in their anger. That we're going to need some understanding, and we're going to need some spiritual empowering. But yet that's why you gave us your Holy Spirit, who gives us the the fruit, the inner virtue that we need to win over our anger, to tame our tongue. Patience and self-control. Lord, help us to be the loving people that we desire to be. And so we pray these things in your name. Amen.